Greg, welcome to the podcast. Hey, thanks. Dude, you make no sense to me. I met you in the water. <laughs> I met you in the water Good and you start. said, yeah, I think I'm starting a, yeah, this lounge, this thing around Vent. Yeah. And then just watch a lot of surf movies. And I was like, that sounds like heaven, but yeah. how is that a business in a place where things are very expensive? Yeah. It truly is expensive here to have a business, expensive. to pay everything right, to pay all the taxes. Especially if you do it the right way. Yeah. I think on the surface, if what you're looking at is just the fin shop, then yes, that probably makes zero sense. But like I was saying earlier, I see the end first. It's how I've always operated. And so I have the fin shop, right? It's all fin and co. So I'm there Tuesday through Friday, 11 to three. Wake up, bring the kids to school, go surf, come back, I'm in there. It's my office. It's a fin shop. If you want to come in and check out some surf fins, you know where to get them in town. And then after four o'clock, it evolves into a cocktail lounge, surf culture themed cocktail lounge, cocktail bar. We're screening films, all that stuff. Correct. And we're going to do that once a month, I think is the goal where we'll, I think what we're going to try and do is a little series where we maybe get some of the local surfers in town let them come in, check out some fins, grab some fins, go for a surf, film them surfing, and then come back and, and put them on the screen. Dude, um, that's right. But can you tell me your story, man? Yeah. Um, how did you get this? Because I know you had a restaurant okay. in New Orleans, yeah, but yeah. at the same time, what you're doing sounds so freaking cool. Okay, we're both from the South. We have that in common, right? You're from Florida, I'm from New Orleans. And so I, I do remember being pushed out at a young age and I was always into the surf magazines and stuff like that. Like, where is this blue water? That is not here. I want to find this blue water. I'm finding your commonality pretty right? quick. Completely enamored by the color of the water and just this thing looked so cool. Mm. And so it must have been when I was like junior or senior, right? Maybe around 93, 94, 95, something like that. Surfer magazine. I see I, there's this expo on different boards and shapers. And I see this one board. It's being surfed by Taj Burrow at the moment. It's a mm -hmm. Maurice Cole yeah. board, MC uh -huh. board. Has a little koala bear logo. I still have it. It's actually signed by Laird Hamilton, who I never met, but ended up coming to our fishing camp with my dad at some point, which is an odd story in itself. Yeah. But anyway, I either wrote him a letter or called him up like on the old school landline. And somehow I remember just a few months later, like a surfboard from Hawaii popped up in a huge box at my grandfather's machine shop. <laughs> and I, the secretary's, what is this? It's usually like boat parts and engine parts and stuff. And so yeah, it's a surfboard. And I try and go out and surf in an area called Port Fouchon, where these like big offshore supply boats come out. They service the oil rigs in the Gulf. And I'm trying to surf out yeah, there. Yeah, what if they have tanker waves there now? Are there foiling? There is a channel and that's very possible, but it's just people fishing. It's yeah. a mess. Yeah, it's a mess. Um, dirty water. All dirty silty. water, yeah. That board made absolute no sense. It was like a gun that was made for the North Shore. Even though I explain like, this is the Gulf of Mexico. I don't know what I'm doing. But fast forward till, I don't know, 03 to 05, I went to graduate school in London and I did a surfing safari in Portugal. I was like, I'm gonna go surf. I'm gonna, I'm gonna figure this out. And that was probably the first time that I stood up on a board. That was with a, an outfit called Atlantic Riders. Thanks, Renee. Shout Appreciate out. It. We, we still keep in touch. What well, year was Still this? out there. That was, so that was probably like 2004. So I did it for a week. We started at the top of Porto mm -hmm. and surfed all the way down, all the way down to the Algarve. And I loved it. And I did it again. And I did it again. I did okay, it so you're weeks. hooked. I did it three weeks in a row. I'm hooked. But I'm not a surfer. I'm a beginner. I've learned how to stand up. I can get up on a board and I got that feeling. Yep. So now I'm hooked. I'm yeah. still not a surfer. And then some years passed and I've done a lot of different things. Started a company, sold a company. And then, all right, so now we get to the first dream, which is, was also a terrible idea, by the way, which was I'm going to buy the single oldest building in downtown New Orleans, not the French Quarter, but the CBD, the Central okay. Business District. This building called the Swoop Duggins House, falling apart, but just looked like a gem of a building. Like I saw the potential. So your vision I sees stuff end. way down yeah, the road. I saw the end first. I didn't okay. see 
the 10 years of work it was going to take to get it to that spot. And, and that's exactly what happened. I had a restaurant for eight years that was wildly successful. The design was really good, both aesthetically and the business design. Your owner operating, you have your commercial real estate, you own it, but then you're also the tenant, you're right. producing the cash flow, you're controlling everything. And if you do that for a decade in an area of a downtown city, that then becomes like the burgeoning. Look, she's. she's I've been watching these sets the whole yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look at that one. That's a nice one. She actually yeah. she came in. Um, Walk it out. Oh, float it down. No. Some, uh, side bites. Oh, really? See, she knew where to get side bites. So I built the whole thing and ran it for eight years. The pandemic hit. So at the end of that, I was like back and forth, right? Between here and New Orleans. So we lived here for a few years. The pandemic hit, it was necessary to go back. Let's remodel right now while we have the opportunity. And when I decided to sell, what I had is a fully permitted, fully restored property, downtown, like turnkey, here you go. All right, so I'm gonna fast forward you. Here's what I just heard. Turns out you're a very astute businessman and your end game has more ways to success than one. And I need to listen to people like you in my life. So can I fast forward you to how sure. you get to Costa Rica, how we're at here? Friends of friends recommended the place. We first came down here around 2015. I think that's about when we moved down here the first time. So the first two and a half, three years was renting, learning how to surf. And then there was that break in the pandemic, sell my place, come back, sell, sold my business, came back, bought a place, what do I do? Who am I? What a complete crisis. Yeah. Hit the rainy season we had two rainy seasons ago, yeah. which was tough on me personally, mm -hmm. just because of the way I entered it with not having a career, not really having any like purpose. And so, all right, like you said, you would love to be in the surf game, right? Who wouldn't? And I thought it would be almost disrespectful to start trying to slang boards. These guys shape for a long time. They put in a lot of work and I was like, all right, I don't want to, I don't want to go that route, but there's all these little components. Okay. What about fins? Let's check it out. And then you do the research and all right, they're fun and they're cool and they're colorful and they can be eclectic, but you know what? It's a $300 million annual business and it's going up. So if you do just to get into the business thing, if you do the math, if you can capture 1% market share that's 3 million in sales per year. One, I was about to make 1%. a joke. I think I am 1% of that because I love fins. I buy them all the time. Right. And I, people that are really into it, like there's no better way to change your board than to buy new fins. And it's also the unknown too, right? Like it changes your board. It, like, it, it really does. Now, maybe not as much on like your average, I don't know, 5'8", thruster yeah. but if you're surfing a longboard or a mid length or a mm. twin fin if you change those fins up you have just you have yeah. a different board it's a whole different you really thing have a you're different right board. man I'm, I'm getting it now so as you're telling me the story it's all it's, it's coalescing is that the right word right. i totally get it you're incredibly intelligent and you make big decisions so yeah we're going to be friends all right i'm digging this you chose an industry if you told me 10 years ago that twin fins would get popular mid links would be the emerging industry that you see professional longboarders heading to it even shortboarders the surf industry changed so much because it used to be magazines movies contests meant something and after the internet came out and you didn't have to be a contest surfer to produce content and now you and i get to see people riding different boards all the time mason ho comes out jamie o'brien takes off now you have Co Roth, all these people are doing these blogs that we watch. Dane Reynolds doesn't have to go on the tour and be miserable, can put out a three minute clip of us just being like, holy crap, I can watch a fat guy get barreled. I love watching that. So <laughs> the whole industry changed and what's entertaining, you happen to launch a fin business. I don't know if you're lucky or smart or just timed it well as the way it goes. You are in front of a huge thing because your average surfer and your high level surfer are heading to the mid-level market to paddle ability, catching waves and doing things. And fins are gonna be the very thing that keeps variety. I hope so. Look, I haven't succeeded yet. I'm just trying. But what I can tell you is this, everyone that I've reached out to. So my thing was like, all right, let's work with all independent shapers. Like I'm not trying to go after FCS. I'm not trying to go after futures. Like I'm working with Captain Finn. I'm working with a couple from J Bay. I'm working with this guy, Corey Nolan from the Northeast Hydrophile. That hey, has some cool I, I want to, sometime when we have more time, 
I, I want to hear the stories, even just when we go surfing uh -huh. or when we hang out, because yeah, yeah. those are interesting, story, interesting stories alone yeah. and making those connections and how you put it together, yeah. what well, you chose. And, and this is how it happened. So I saw this one um, brand, I was looking up recycled fins, okay. right? Okay. Because I wanted to do that. I wanted to maybe like 3D print or manufacture or somehow crank out quality recycled fins. And I see this couple that are now running it. They didn't start in Germany, but they're out of Germany now. And they're using recycled bottle caps, okay. a blend of 70% okay. recycled bottle caps and fiberglass blend. And they're cranking out really cool fins. And then they're also doing a recycled carbon fiber. I think that'll be received which well is here. Incredible, which I have at my shop. And so at first the email and the conversation was, look, I'm opening a fin shop. I'd love to have you guys on the wall here. And then months down the line, it's all right, you guys are doing exactly what I'd love to do. You're not out here in Central America. It's probably not even on your radar. How do you feel about maybe doing some co-branding with me? Let me put my brand on your fin. You guys handle the manufacturing and we all just like maybe sell a little more. And that's where I'm at now. So I have like my own branded fin in our shop. I surf with them. They're great. They're really flexy. If flex is your thing, check these fins out. They're Dude, really there's good. your slogan, because that could be taken wrong. If flex is your thing, that's <laughs> such a great shirt or hat. Yeah, for sure. Hey, so. Um, but that's, that's where I'm at. <laughs> Dude, right, pause then, for a second. Right. Uh, 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 just good gosh, man. So your weird can, story that seems to make no sense, it's making a lot of sense. You're uh, getting in good, front of explosive good, good. growth. You're co-branding with companies and industries that are very little known now, but are probably about to be. And all you need is a fraction of the ownership inside that market to do quite well with the way you're positioning yourself. And you're basically creating a craft brewing company of this. <laughs> ahead of schedule so. yeah, I guess so. you're doing what you did in new orleans because so. uh, so. when you told your new orleans story you're like hey i went and bought a building that's yeah. fantastic it's old yeah and as soon as you said that i'm like yeah duh that was of course that's a good idea you remodel stuff people love look at every tv show in the world but when you did it it didn't seem like a good idea you can't be afraid to be off the beaten path in life in general business and in life because if you're trying to if you're trying to get started like where it's already happened it's just like it's probably going to be a losing battle. You have to get in early. When you did you learn this? Because like, I bought, bought my house in, in, in Garza. You know why? Because I can't really afford it here and I don't want to overextend myself by trying to buy a house right here. You um, said the fear thing. I want to pause on that. Mm -hmm. You said you can't live in fear. You can't do that stuff. I wildly disagree. I think most people live in fear. I know I yeah, live in fear. Yeah, That's yeah. part of what keeps me motivated. And also I've got to give back enough to, to the place where I don't feel right. So yeah. Even this podcast, all the effort and time, a lot of it is from fear. Yeah. I want, I don't want to run out of money to provide for my family and survive. Yeah. It's, it's wildly expensive. <laughs> yeah. And as an entrepreneur here, there's ups and downs. People yeah. might think, because you have a nice car, that everything's great and look at all the money you have. They might not realize that car's about to break any second or he has. And the amount of money to operate, keep employees, pay taxes, do everything. Yeah. You really have to produce. I Fear keeps me yeah. on the line of waking up every day Thank God we have surf, but after surf, it's go time. Nassar is not like a tranquil place for somebody who doesn't have capital. You gotta go. I'm right there, look, maybe on the surface because I can talk that game that you just heard from me, but in all honesty, I've laid it on the line. I, I'm operating, <laughs> I'm on the edge right now where I am <laughs> operating on the edge and I've got a wife and two little boys that I need to look after. Okay. And now we're know, talking. Just, but I've always gone for the home runs and sometimes they work and sometimes you strike out, but you can't hit the grand slam if you're not swinging for the fences. And I, for better or worse, I've always lived that way. Maybe at some point I'll learn and I'll have some regrets. I want to know how you got that way. Slower. No, don't, no, don't change yeah, anything. Don't, you just flew yeah. past something I wildly disagree with. You said you can't live without taking big swings. And as if just everyone thought that way, I was just, Ways for yeah. a flag stand. Most people don't think that way. Like you and I sitting here right now to most everyone back home, they think we're nuts. Yeah. Like when I moved down here with no money, two kids, everything, I sold everything I had, came down, had maybe $2,500 total to my name in a galloper. Put it on the line. It was nuts now that I look yeah. back at it. I don't recommend anyone do that. But it's at the same tough. time, I, w I wouldn't change it for anything. The pains of here 
are way better than the pains of there of not trying and not making it and always wondering. I watched The Endless Summer every night from 1999 to the day I moved here in 2009, programming myself, thinking in Playa Negra, the waves and the whole thing, and was buying properties, building houses, doing stuff that we could. Uh, but I wasn't here yet, and I fought for it so hard, I, I don't want to lose it, so I have this fear instilled. You were much smarter about yours. You built, you did fantastic and with your restaurant and your building, but now you have a chance to hit the reset button. It's yeah. at the bottom right now. I really, right. I'm at the beginning stages. I've s s spent all the startup capital that I've like, I'm really like, I'm in, I should be like a young 23 entrepreneur right now. That like, that's the life I'm living. Right. Like I was, I'm on Instagram promoting a DJ party last night. I'm like, I'm 45 with two kids. Like what the fuck? That makes no sense at all. Like that Dude. aspect of what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> well, it does if you want to make it here. Yeah, but but so it doesn't. For me, like, <laughs> it's better. So much better. Hey, this is the answer to all of the stuff we're saying, though. Yeah. For us to be able to go out and surf consistently, because we're from the South, we're from flat places, without many, without much waves. Yeah. I'll give a shout out to my friend Robert Barbieri. He said a quote one time, Rich. He said, Rich. If you can get me down here and I could go surf for an hour every morning, you could punch me right in the face when I get out and I'll be happier than going so hard back home. And whenever things are tough, that's what I remind myself. I went surfing today, but I had to go to long boards and start experimenting with fins to have fun. Often I surf with no fin. Yeah, uh, I, saw I saw you. I saw you. I'm trying to find a way to keep, I've been here a long time now, and I'm trying to find a way to keep Guiones interesting. Because yeah. for me, that's not my optimal wave. Like my, I'm big. I need a bigger, stronger I, wave. I'm right there with you. I get mad when it's really small out here and I try and longboard. It's just, and I do it when it's called for, but I would much, I love this place when it's maxing. When it's me and you and eight to 10 other takers out there. And it's, it's that's my favorite version of Guiones for whatever reason, I, I really love it. And it doesn't, like it doesn't, it can't hold <laughs> that big of waves out here. But like the max that it can hold, I would, I wish I was like, it was like that every day out here. Oh man, I, I think you're getting closer in life to using your very first surfboard gun. <laughs> I learned on a gun only because I didn't know what a gun was. And I'm dead serious. And I think this makes a lot of sense. When I first moved here and I needed to get a board and I knew shit about the different types of boards, I went over to Juan Surfo. All right, this is rainy season, it's August, it's dreary. What year? And so this was like 15, maybe 2015, 16, something like that. And I knew I didn't want to learn on a long board, but I also knew that I was, I probably wasn't gonna figure it out at age 36, 37, whatever I was on a short board. And so I saw this shape in the middle it was a 7.3 semi gun it's a 7.3 pintail quad backyard shaper but brand new somehow some reason he had it and i learned on that board and i didn't know what a gun was and i'm sure i looked like a complete kook out there which was the absolute truth but i was living in kathy's house by baker's so i lived in that was my first house was Fantastic. the one on Baker's right there. I was putting in three a days for a year straight. I will figure this out. On a gun in Guiones. On a gun in Guiones. From New Orleans. What's the interesting thing that happened when you learn with a gun, as the waves get bigger, the board starts to work better. It starts to work like it was intended to work. And by this weird fate, I started to get better as the waves got bigger and I wanted them bigger because I noticed my board worked better. I'm not sure what would have happened if, uh, if I wouldn't have got started with that gun. Dude. I really don't. All right, I, we're, I, hey. And I still have it. It's like the one that's on display at that's my funny. house. That's funny. I think subconsciously or whatever, that's what got you in this fin angles because you're associated with guns your whole life and it makes no freaking sense. Your my whole life doesn't make sense. My first two boards were, were guns. That's what one I'm saying. that I've never even ridden because I just, I, like, I couldn't ride it at the time. And then I, my brother ended up moving to Hawaii. I sent him off with it. Yeah, that made sense. And, and he beat it up pretty good for him. But then I later got it back. I've got, it's in like my board dungeon at my house. Right you now. make weird connections in life. All right, so here's what I learned in our conversation so far. 
you have big ideas and end things and you find a way to blend it together. If it's a building, you'll put the restaurant inside of it, then rehab the building, make the money from that, and you have an escape plan. Fence stuff, it's not just you want to try to retail sell fence, which obviously wouldn't work. You're bonding and investing in the future of these other fin companies by co-branding and creating a craft brewery, essentially, of fin stuff. And then you go big. Yeah, and then I want to, what I'd like to do is take it online. And that's what I'm working on right now. If you can believe it, there's not one online, all-encompassing surf fin shop. There's a few like board warehousey places, but everyone's doing their own thing. And it's, that would take a lot of work and a lot of finesse and a lot of networking. But I think, I think it makes sense for everyone instead of trying to sell individually, like just, just create this central hub and like more for everybody. <laughs> Got that, it. That's what I'm trying to do okay. right now. That's the end I, game. That's I, what I saw first. But I have to build, the, people need to see, I'm not some tech guy in San Francisco or New York trying to can't crank out a surfing website. You have to live it in this business. You have to be here, you have to be surfing, you have to have that sort of beach life credibility, I think, and then someone might patronize what you're trying to do. So can I ask you this? Is it safe to say you're investing in your future and your business and you can go to sleep every night knowing you're providing for your family because you're aiming at this, but in the meantime, you get to have a crap ton of fun? Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. I think that's my lifestyle. <laughs> right, I think that yeah. might be yours. Yeah, it works. <laughs> Hopefully it works. Let's know. bounce to where you're at, to your shop, and l let's see what's going on. I'm, I haven't been in yet since. Yeah. I haven't been in. I'm excited to see it. Let's go check it out. All right. Gregory, we're at your place. We were just at the beach uh, a couple days ago. I'm here at All Finco. Over the weekend, I took one of your pictures, and I can't remember what I put. I think I, was, I, just, I shared it. I said something like, this strange new place, or I can't remember what I said. Yeah. Strange was the word. Strange, yeah. My attention. <laughs> and I was 100% right. This is, look, you have fins everywhere, but I could buy them or look at them. You have surf movies playing, music playing. I guess drinks is, that's like a lounge? Are we in a lounge? Yeah, we're in like half cocktail bar, half surf fin shop, which doubles as my office during the day. Yeah, so that's, that's kind of it. But yeah. You can see during the day I'm in here, I had a few people drop in, actually I had three different groups drop in, all from Austin, Texas, which is just really strange. I'm not sure how that happened. Sold a few fins, sold some wax, some leashes, some random stuff. But then those people also said, man, we wanna come back at night and check it out because this looks like it would be uh, an interesting place to come check out in the evening time. And that's the idea. It's the type of place that it's like, you underground weird surf shop during the day and then it evolves to a cocktail spot at night maybe we have some djs maybe we have live music maybe we have we're gonna do an 80s night thing with with the vintage clothing store hot tamale oh, hot tamale yeah so we're gonna do Shout a night we're gonna, yeah we're gonna do a night with hot tamale nice like a monthly kind of thing and uh, that's it just try and create that community surf spot we're gonna screen some surf films here soon. We're going to start producing some, not full on films, but like monthly vignettes, something that we could just crank out on a monthly basis. What gave you the idea for the wave? Because as soon as I walked out and saw that wave, I went straight to it and was like trying to feel yeah, it like I was getting barreled. Yeah. I've been working with this young designer for years. I found him on 99designs. Don't even really know his name. We've only communicated over email. Very talented designer. And I, when I was like, all right, yeah, I want to have a, a flat screen long ways. And I want to have my logo on it. And then it was, oh, let's get some kind of like moving, like a wave graphic. And then he totally, and he's not a surfer. He was like, all right, I got you. And then he sends this back a week later. And then it's just like bar looking down the barrel of a wave. Yeah, <laughs> it set the tone. When I walked in here, I was instantly happier. The blue, the color of happiness anyway. And then when I put my head close to it to pretend I was getting barreled, I heard the ocean and then I felt it. it like I was already happy as I walked through and then I saw a surf movie playing. Yeah. Asymmetrical <laughs> twin fins. That blue twin fin, goodness gracious. I, that's yeah, a yeah. good look. Shout out to Douglas. That guy is... Yeah, tell us about him out. real quick. Douglas Evans, he's out in Marbella holding it down. Has He's shaped boards for a decade, decades, I don't know, out in Bali. And he trained under a well-known shaper out there. And I don't know how many years he's been out here in Marbella, but he's got like a really nice little shop. If you're heading down Marbella, it's on your right. 
He's been fixing it up ever since I've started going to him. And he and I had a lot of fun. Like, I'm not a shaper. He is. I wanted to create some boards to go with the aesthetic, right? This is alt fin. It's all about like alternative surf fin. So I'm not trying to rep the big boys that have already made it. It's captain fin and who they're like medium size. They're pretty big, but down yeah. to like your independent backyard shapers from all over the world. And you're not scared to take a chance. And no, what is that? I don't know. You put that on one of your finless boards and you get like a little bite, right? Like just a little bit, not to completely slide out, but like kind of slide and then bring it back. I love it. I love this discussion. Yeah. Like you're reading my mind. <laughs> I'm already thinking about yeah. it right now. I mean, I've changed my fin on my longboard three times in the last two days just because I like to see what the different fins do. Talk me through that. What okay. was the adventure? Okay. You said okay. three times, like what? Three, so I went from having a really fat Joel Tudor, I don't know where it's at, somewhere behind there, behind the bar, really fat fin that I felt like rode like, like how you would envision like a Lexus or a Cadillac, just like old school comfort. And then I switched it to this fin over here. I don't know what you call this, but this is from J-Bay. So this, I think this is like a popular, popular, <laughs> I can't say it right now. Uh, it's popular. a new template. Yeah. Hey, um, you, want, you know what's not popular? No, that. that's not at all. So what the heck's going on, man? Okay. This is the, this is this guy, Corey Nolan, hydrophile surfcraft, surfcraft. He's up in the Northeast. The way he describes it is, so there was a long board built, what, in the 60s or 70s called a pig, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And it's... To my knowledge, it's really fat yeah. on the back and the bottom, and then up front, it it come it, it like pulls in on the front. It's a Del Velzi shape, I believe. It, yeah, so it came mostly with these glassed in. Uh -huh. but I've seen full, it right. I but, said they were lower. Full, full. Yeah. And so his idea is to make that older board to give it a little more of a modern feel. I got gotcha. just so let it flow and grab exactly. A give it a little more maneuverability. Hey, can I ask you your opinion? I think fins are the unknown thing in surfing right now. Like I, I think board shaping, if you look, look from 1982, basically now, a lot of the shortboards and stuff are the same. Mm -hmm. The one thing we don't have a handle on is fins. If I take my Tomo and I ride a standard fin setup, just the standard fins, mm -hmm. and I adjust it to this, uh -huh. the same board, it couldn't ride more different. It's the easiest, it's the cheapest and easiest way to get a new surfboard, without a doubt. Now, of course, if we're just riding thrusters, there's only so much I think you can do with thruster fins, right? But then if we're talking about single fins and twin fins and bonzers and twinsers and all the other just kind of stuff out there, I think it's I mean, a future it's, surfing, it's by com the way. It completely, look at those crazy things that are on that board right there. What is that? I don't know. I don't know. But you know what? I've been riding it and it's really fun. It's really fast. Does it's, it whistle? It's really loose. It said whistle. Yeah, when you, when you get, get enough speed, you hear it hum. Like, hasn't been big enough. I don't okay. know. I can't tell you. I haven't right. gone fast enough yet. Like, keep been, me posted on that. It's small out there. I, but I think it's going to. Yeah, I, as it gets bigger, I'm going to keep bringing that board out there. But all right, so I switched from like, a modern keel to that and it's a different board it's a yeah. totally different board hey um, so you said you changed three times you told me about one was yeah, it the same yeah, yeah. board or was it no it's yeah same board it's okay a, so what was the nine, round two nine three? three black rose shaped by yeah, so uh, Rick, ricky carroll shout out ricky hero yeah ricky carroll what justin Quintal's label justin and, Quintal, um, good gosh hey get him down man he's from jacksonville area where i'm from yeah i've talked to him at jack's pc get him down he should she come right here. I don't know the guy. We traded emails once, but What's it would be fun. Let's get Justin <laughs> down here, man. Yeah. So I went from, first I had this crazy long, thin Christensen blade type fin on it. Okay. Then I went to the two that I just talked about. And then today, what did I put on one of these, which I haven't tried yet, but it's set up for the next time I go. It's one of, if you look up there, one of those like tie dyed like the one with the hole in it that we were just looking at uh -huh. not i didn't put that one but i thought uh, you had one of these one, or something like that it, well, it's a shape like that but it's get corey's brand of fin i got you Let's talk about corey while you're on it okay yeah so corey was the first person that 
I reached out to when this was just an idea in my head to see if anyone would listen to me. And it was basically, look, man, I follow your stuff. I like what you're doing. You put out some really unique stuff. What do you think about doing a small batch for me? Let's call it like 16. You get creative with it. You choose the colors. You choose the shapes. Just give me a quiver of fins for this new shop that I want to open or this new like online fin shop or physical shop or whatever it's going to be at the time because I don't even know. But I figure I need to start making these things. And yeah, he wrote back and he was into it. I think. So you, of, were you sitting in New Orleans when you typed this or were you sitting Oh, no, no, no. That, that, was, that, was, that was out here. That was probably like, if I look back at the emails, I'd say maybe a year and a half ago. Okay, so I your mind training. was already spinning. You're just finding a way to make it a hook, make it work. I want to get into the, I love surfing. I don't know enough about shaping boards. Those guys, have, they're doing it a long time. And fin shapers too, but I just thought it was something that was a little more accessible, a little more niche, something that, people aren't exactly paying attention right. to, but maybe they should be. And so that's why I took a shot at that. Yeah, I thought it lent itself to cool decor. And but I <laughs> your eye for style and fashion. I do have a fatal flaw though. If I sell all of them, my place looks like shit. <laughs> like, just got a, a bare wall because it takes forever to get stuff back in this country. Gregory, I have some good news and some bad news. <laughs> <laughs> go the good news ways. is that's not going to happen. Yep. Uh -oh. <laughs> what, selling them all? <laughs> yep. And then the bad news is that it's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. 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 However, yeah. let's keep talking on your in on okay. the fins because you have yeah. a couple. I've seen all of Finco on multiple fin varieties. Yeah. So look, if you grab any one of those right there, maybe the blue one, that one, that one looks cool. All right, so this one looks like a dagger. So when I, again, when I started this, I was just looking to bring in different fin companies. And I also wanted to make my own, but I didn't know okay. how. But I knew I wanted to do something like sustainable and recycled. I wanted to make good recycled fins. You, get, you have plastic fins, they're all shitty. And so I was looking around, I saw these guys, Sieve Fins. Sieve, okay, okay. And they're out of Germany, if you can believe that. They started out coastal. I don't remember where, but they started out coastal in Northwestern Europe somewhere. And then okay. they got more central, but they wanted to keep doing something involved with the ocean. And so they started working with a few of these different German engineering companies. They did their R&D for years. If you go on their website or mine, it'll direct you to theirs and you can see the time and work that they put in. Those fins are 70% recycled ocean found bottle caps, 30% fiberglass. Shout it's, out it's, to it's a blend. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Thanks for <laughs> helping me out. And then but you're so all of the colored ones are, it's that blend of plastic and fiberglass. Any of the black ones are recycled carbon fiber. I don't even know how you do that, but they're, they've come up with a way to do that. And so, yeah, at first I was just going to carry their product, but then I went after things were starting to take off. I went back to them and just said, I'd like, I'm, you're doing exactly what I would like to do. Would you guys be open to working with me and maybe launching like a co-branded project? And now you're not, you're not just another fin in the shop. You're like the center of the shop with me and we're doing this together. And that was how that, so they, they agreed to it. And that's why their logo is a little bigger than mine. And the fin. Fine. That, but yeah, no, it's great. That is great. This is the second podcast I've recorded today where a business owner was implementing recycled materials back into the product and they're all yeah. new they, they're, yeah. they just launched they're a couple years old and just changed locations down to pueblo and then you it's cool to see this no sorry hippie vibe is integrating into the actual product yeah i'm trying i i'm not some big freedom fighter i think it's front and center out here and i'm just trying to be a part of it and i love the ocean and i hate when i see a ton of plastic on the beach it's, it sucks and I don't want to surf in a bunch of plastic. And this is one way to cut off that life cycle. We're taking the plastic out of the ocean and now we're surfing with it, which I think is pretty cool. Oh, geez, also just changes the mindset. It's people thinking in a forward, progressive, yeah. we yeah. can't do something about it, but still have fun.
mentality. Yeah. Well, surfboards are really bad for the environment. They're super flexy, which I like in a fin. I, so I use our eight inch fin okay. on this six nine single fin album, like pintail egg thing that I have. And it's great. It loosens up the board, which when I got, it was like, it felt just a little stiff and a lot of high volume. But now like with a smaller fin, that's really flexy. It flies. It's good. I like it. Right on. So look, let's check then. So this right here, this is a young woman by the name of Zala in the, the Mentawai Islands. I think I'm pronouncing that. I've never been there. But so what she does, this is really cool. Yeah. Island lines. She takes fiber. She takes cloth. This is something that a lot of you're starting to see this more and more, I think. But so I guess they do a few layers of fiberglass and then they cut the cloth just like material that you would buy. And then they layer it in there and then they put more fiberglass. So this is like a material that's inlaid in the fiberglass. Got it. It's like if you took a sheet and put it in between all the fiberglass, that's essentially what this is. It's clear. Yeah. Super cool. So what other fins do you want to showcase yeah. while, while we're doing this? All right. Let's see. So yeah, all around. Co, fin design. Yeah, let Bay, let's talk about those guys. This is actually a really, this, is a, this reminds me of when you look at these. What, this is one thing I like about the wall. It, if you're looking at this fin just like this, it's, it's pretty stale. Yeah, I don't know. So I mean, we're all right? Yeah. But yeah. I, I would never eat they, dinner, right? They, I'd just well, be sitting here playing with the fins forever. But I'll tell you this. So yeah, look at the Mahi Mahi twin fin. FCS. I will tell you this though. One, look, I love these. I like, want to go try these tomorrow. Like, what, what would you say this? Just like traditional modern keel. Yeah, Something but it does like have a modern soft, and a traditional. Yeah, keel. I was say, I don't think it's definitely not modern, but yeah. it's, it's not super yeah. traditional. Like your keel fins are my favorite. Like they are my absolute. Tell me why favorite. For the way that I surf, like I am not trying to do big turns off snappy turns off the top like <clears throat> i would prefer just bigger waves go really fast and get a few swooping turns but also be able to just take a straight line going like as fast as possible okay. if that's needed at somewhere like oc and i think keel fins just provide the best for that like for my type of surfing i know people that would hate this fin because you're like too locked in and you want to be able to like pivot and turn right. real fast. I'm not trying to do so that. I don't surfboard speed, short enough to do that. Speed, flow, glide. Yeah, that, that's yeah. Just, speed, flow, yeah, glide. That's what I like. Like the shortest board that I'm going to surf is a 6.2. I, I just, you. I don't like surfing unless it's a big fat retro board that has some concave V with the stringer, like a novelty board. I'd surf something like that, a big 5.2 fat sort so of that thing. Blue board. This is a beautiful surfboard, first It off. is. Now, you're not big into selling surfboards. That's not your main goal here, but you do have a couple, it seems. I want to. That's okay. why I had a made. Yeah. So the I had five boards shaped to open the place with. Uh -huh. This one and this one are not one of those five, but let's talk about these because they're from the same shaper. Okay, cool. Yeah, let's start yeah. here. And so the, basically, these two are on consignment. I had the other ones shaped specifically for the shop. But this one, when he offered to let me keep in here, we were like, yeah, it goes with the quiver. So we're looking at what a 5'8 fish uh -huh. twin fin looks like medium, I don't know, it's like a medium rocker, not terribly thick. So I look at this, I look at this board and this is just like a Guiona's board. I agree. The yeah, it, it, the, it really is. Our model for that shaper, he should shape big fat boards for Guiona's. Oh, I'm getting sidetracked. Fins. Fin. So talk me through if, what you would do. What do you see? What's if, your thing? If I were to ride this board, uh -huh. what would you get? I would try a number of different fins, but just looking at the shape, uh -huh. I think the first fins that I would go to because of the way that I like to ride would probably be something like these. Like what a traditional not, modern it's, blend. It's fin. not what everybody would choose, but when I look at this, yeah, this is what I would ride right here because I think it just lends itself to like flowy, yep. big turns. This yellow one and teal one also caught my eye too. Yeah, but, but yeah, look, let's, one let's, look at, let's look at the difference real quick. Or how about this crazy thing? Look, take one of Corey's like hatchet twin fin. Okay. There is no way 
there's no, I don't want to jam it in there right now, but there's no way that this fin and this fin ride the same way. It's just going to be a different board. I've never even seen I don't know this what they're, what it's going to do and let, until you try it. I think it's going right? to grab and pivot hard but, and that's going to be more flow. That, that makes sense that it would pivot for sure. That board you saw me on today had a big hatchet fit on it. Oh, did it really? Yeah. I, ha I haven't tried those yet. It had a hatchet in the middle and two side bites like this on the side. But anyway, so this, this is... Look at this. This one just looks perfect on here. Cool. Like even just the, the red and the blue, I think looks... Can I play with the other boards? And, hey, I go for it. So again, shout out to who, who did this? This is J-Bay. Yeah. Nice. And which is really cool. They look at that. They carved J Bay right in there, which I think is nice. Shout out to J Bay. So this is a weird freaking board, dude. So yeah, I I had this board specifically shaped for me. Just opening the shop. I want a new board. It's been a few years. So here was the idea. Douglas and I designed this together. I wanted something with channel bottoms, but not really pronounced. So we did this like super subtle channel bottom here type deal. And we put the angle of the channels. So he puts all his fans at 9.99 degrees. Okay. And so what I wanted to do is split the difference with the channels. So the middle is zero degrees. This is 99 degree. So what we did is this channel is at 3.33. This channel is fanned out at 6.66, ends at 9.99. So it's just like an even distribution of water flow. I think that makes sense. It feels really good in the water. It's and then you have channels on these fins, which is... Can I ask you what gave you the idea to stick this fin and this surfboard? I had surfed with a few other fins and these were i just wanted to try these it's a chasing variety <laughs> yeah i just wanted to it see what i'm trying to sell these things so i should know how they ride and that was the idea okay so tell me how this rides really fast and loose this is the one that i think is gonna hump really fast and loose yeah i love how i mean it's it's got a lot of depth so you can serve some somewhere hosty and put it on the rail real fast it's going to catch but I think with these channels, so if you if you look how the fin was made, so oh, these are the different geez. layers of fiberglass, uh -huh. right? And then he, as he started sanding down, you get to the different colors that are down below. These are called the storm. It's it's modeled it. off a storm, right? Swell coming in. That's what it is. It's if you look at the charts, these are like storms or swells coming in. Hey, I was in Florida for that hurricane that just went through. <laughs> yeah, that's was, what it looked, our right house there. was like right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a great um, the storm. But that's then a the, good one. the shape of it, it's from a it's modeled from the fin of a humpback whale, right? So people are getting creative, and I think it's fun. What a freaking trip! Can we talk about your personal one that, that I've seen you on besides this one? Huh? Can we grab this guy? Yeah. This is something that people will, they're going to recognize the kind of the fin shape, but this is an yeah. interesting board. So these are glass then. Yeah. There you go. If, right, so you've, Chris, if, you've Chris seen, if you've seen me surfing out for the last two years, th this is the board that I've been on. 99% of the time, this is the board that I've been on. It's a 6'6". It's, a six -six. it's called, it's a long fish. And if you look on Christensen's website, he describes this board as if you were stuck on a deserted island and you had one board to surf big waves, small waves, this is the board he put you on. And I completely understand why. So this is a winner. You can surf this board in like longboard Guiana's conditions, really easy, low energy, you can catch waves on this board, but you can surf this Max Guiones and this thing will just fly. It, I'd like, it to, has, try, I'd it like has, to try that sometimes. It has so much hold. Um, I feel like he gives like a, even a downward tail to hold. Like he, this guy knows what he's doing. It's a really good shape. Yeah, and I believe the glassing was done at um, Moonlight Glassing, which those guys are OGs. It, so here's it's your really, it's really here. soft. <clears throat> if you take the, the wax off, you'll see a lot of pressure marks, but it's also been really durable. I like pressure marks, man. It gives it some character. But man, the, fle it. the flex that you get from a good glass job that's meant to give a little uh -huh. is absolutely worth the pressure marks that end up on your board. I, I, completely, I think. Agree. I I completely think. agree. I completely agree. Uh, uh, see, if anybody buys a board and just hangs it, I respect that, but it's so much nicer when they have a a little bit of use in them. Yeah. So this is your all-arounder. 
this is your version of short board for the yeah. This is you sure. having fun with the cool stuff. Yeah, finish. I'll probably change those out pretty <laughs> soon. But I want to surf it in big waves first. All right, so tell us about the rest of the place real quick. What else? Okay. Would you yeah, like to eat out so there? So a bit about my background is before I moved out, before and during and after, I had a, a restaurant and a cocktail bar in downtown New Orleans. And I wanted to bring some of that cocktail culture here into the surf shop. And this is the result. Just like a cocktail bar slash surf shop. We got, I've always been into music. So I brought in my two Technics 1200s, which got absolutely beat up on the way in. Would but they look again? really good. I think these are amazing. Would no, you no. And when it's all said and done, they'll probably stay here because they just weigh too much. But the, the mixer made it in all right. But yeah, we're starting to have some DJs in here. I'm not trying to club this place up. That's not what it's about. It's more about like, I put in this cool little boutique hi-fi audio right. setup so that whenever we watch films, you get good sound. When we're just listening to music, you get good sound. If the DJ is playing, it's already here. It's already set up. And records are just our CDs. We do both. So we do, we do listening nights. Uh -huh. So we've been doing a listening night with an artist by the name of one, one Carlos Saldana. I think I'm okay. pronouncing that, that correctly. Okay. He's been in town for 20 years. So he comes in and he just brings his vinyl collection. He's not a DJ. He's not mixing records. Nice. It's just like his curated selection of music. I didn't come this past week, but the week before he brought in some Radiohead, some Beatles. Wow. Um, so you guys are all over the place. It was just like a really eclectic, yeah, kind selection of, of your fins of, as a of as music. A old, new, yes, yeah, modern, old, traditional. New. But then tomorrow night, we're going to have a DJ and he's going to play more like some downbeat, ambient kind of stuff. So electronic, but more like mushroom, jazzy, like slower, a little more sophisticated kind of stuff. Great. And then if a crowd shows up and it needs to become more upbeat, he'll do that too. And then on uh, Thursday, I'm sorry, that's going to be on, that's on Fridays. Okay. On Thursday, we have uh, Juan, who is the, the cafe manager upstairs, okay. but he's also DJed for years out in San Jose. And I love his style of music. It's a little more upbeat. It would, I call it like, just like deep house or okay. like minimal house or just classic house music is it where people and, um, can still talk and hang out and drink or well, is it that's why i got a good sound system because you can crank this up really really loud which i'm not going to do now but when we stop recording i'll turn this up right. for you and look i brought an acoustic sound paneling i'm trying to You're ceiling i think <laughs> awesome um the ceiling was black and i painted it white and it, it, it brightened the place up a lot from yeah, its it its first iteration that. It did used to be black. but yeah so i think you know in the evening time what we're going for is like surf culture arts club kind of place like you come in you have some cocktails have a beer we have a few different mocktails i even made a point to bring in a we have a non-alcoholic bellini that, what's a, what's a what's that so a Bellini is like sparkling and peach, peach okay, okay. juice or pureed peach, but this is a non-alcoholic. I'm 45. I've got a lot of friends that don't drink anymore. I'm trying to not drink as much. Not too easy when you own a place like this, but I want people to be able to come in and have a non-alcoholic beer or a, a non-alcoholic cocktail or a non-alcoholic sparkling because I, this is a healthy town. It's very tricky to make it as just a cocktail bar or even a restaurant because it's so seasonal. I think you have to have a, a few different avenues, like you have to have a few different sources of revenue to put it together. So I've got the surf shop, we've got cocktails, I'm trying to sell some fins online. And then hopefully at the end of the day, you can pay the bills and you're doing something you love. That's oh, what I'm trying to do. And, and I, I, can't, about? I can't wait for the artwork to come in. I saw this guy, Russell Spencer. He had, so I'm doing the fin thing and I see these really cool abstract superimposed fins that are on the cover of Surfer's Journal a few years ago. And I remembered it when this thing started to take form. And so I just, I wrote him an email like, look, man, I'm opening this fin shop. I love your photography. 
I love to work with you in some capacity. And I mean, we chatted for, I think two, a year and a half, two years, I was trying to do something with him. And <clears throat> we worked something out where he let me license a few of his photos from this big, like calls it a double exposure project. Okay. I think he was commissioned by the California Surf Museum to document all of these different surfboards or fins or something. I've been and then I, I think he took some of them and did his own project while he was on the job, or I don't know exactly how it played out. But that's where he got those old shapes that he blended together. Exactly, it's all from the California Surf Museum. Right. And so I was like, oh, look at all these like cool, it's like fin photography, that's up my alley. We had them printed on the West Coast, had them sign, he signed them as editions of 10, numbered them. That was really something, getting those works of art here in good condition. And they did, they showed up, they're in great shape. So they're in San Jose being framed right now. I'll have one of each framed, but I'm gonna keep them here at the shop and you can purchase them framed or unframed. Right. So taking my shot at cultural production, some the, the art world, seeing what I can do there. Awesome. I've always tried to put the art first, and I think you can build a business out of anything. There's enough people in the world that will support the strangest endeavor, right? So we're getting so back right. to this. Why can't this work? And no, I think it totally can. It's going to have to grow, and it'll have to scale into something else. But I think this place can be a catalyst for something that that continues to grow and, and hopefully supports a life of surfing and supporting a family and have an artistic component that could be that's living the dream but gut-wrenching as hell to be an entrepreneur man like i'm it's been rough lately straight up it has not been easy i've been really stressed out but just lately i'm starting to see it like turn the corner like it always does but like you have to get through the shit and it's been rough lately but like the sun has broke, high season's here. The waves will be small for a while, but come out of, and get out of December, January, February, it starts getting bigger. And I think that's, that's my you ride got, up. Yeah, maybe for your surfing, but for your business, people should know to come in now because you got small wave fins all over the place. Yeah, for sure. Just a full on buffet, yeah. awesome variety. Yeah, Thank please come in, support the support the shapers, support the, the people in their backyards and their houses that are, also trying to make a living by putting artistic surf fins out into the world. And somebody like Douglas that's out in Marbella, cranking out unique shapes and just, he's doing his own thing out there. And oh, you're doing your own too, man. I wish you the best in your family, the absolute best of luck. All right, thanks, man.